Hello, everybody. Uh, <laughs> as you may know, my name is Leo. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm currently the host of this event. Uh, and we have Albin Stjärna, uh, who is a PhD student, I think. Yes. That's and uh, Simon, Fno Simon von Knorri. Uh, I don't know. You, 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 you work. I don't know what, what, your, what your position is. Yes, I'm working. <laughs> so I, I think we can first start, start off with uh, uh, you presenting yourself. So Simon, can you start? Uh, yes, uh, my name is Simon. And I'm stud studied uh, computer scientist at 2011. Studied around about six, seven years, depending on, on hand counting, and has now been in uh, the working business uh, here, actually in, in Uppsala town, uh, since uh, two and a half years. And then I'm working as a system developer, but uh, more precisely, I work as a web developer. Okay, uh, then Albin, can you present yourself? What do you do? Okay, uh, so I am uh, 32 years old. I have taken both the bachelor's and the master's um, programs for some definition of taken and program. <laughs> and uh, uh, I, um, yeah, I, I've been since, uh, I've been a PhD student here at Uppsala for since one year. Um, so yeah, I started straight after university with, with just more university. Okay. Um, hmm. We could start off with some quick framework questions. Uh, Albin, do you use Beam or Emacs? Uh, yeah, okay, so I have to answer Emacs because, um, uh, well, I'm teaching IOPM and uh, as a teacher at IOPM, I have to use Emacs. Uh, but I also use Emacs for fun. I've been doing that for my entire life. Uh, no, oh, okay, obviously not when I was a kid, but I, I, I very briefly started off using Vim and then I switched to Emacs uh, some, I don't know, eight, 10 years ago or something like that. And I've just, I, it would be wrong to say that I didn't look back, uh, but um, I, I haven't looked back a lot. I hate Emacs to be sure, but I use it right. for everything. Right. Um, uh, yeah. Uh, Karin, could you also present yourself before I forget? Yes, <laughs> so everyone knows who I am. Uh, I am Karin Tellenberg. I'm a project leader at the Office for Science and Technology here at Uppsala University. And my role in this is that I'm kind of the, the one who coordinates all this life after graduation, what happens after your program. And this is an initiative from UTN and uh, the office for, where I work. Um, to have this kind of seminars for all the programs that we are giving at the faculty. So, then this is I. So, back to you. Yeah, so, uh, these framework questions, I meant to, for them to be quite quick. So, e Emacs or, or Vim, Simon? I started with Emacs. Uh, uh, yeah, I, I will say Emacs. I started with the Emacs, uh, tested Vim some small occasion, but it was mostly Emacs and me uh, at the beginning of, of my studies. Okay. Tabs or spaces? Like Simon. Club or space? Club uh, or space. What? Tab or space for inventation. Tab or space. Oh, uh, tab. Okay. Space. Oh, oh shit. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, okay. So, favorite programming language or paradigm? This is a, a viewer question. Uh, Albin, could you start? Okay. Um... I'll try to make this one shorter. Uh, I like logic programming. I think logic programming is cool. Um, also known as constraint programming. Um, but I can do anything that's not object oriented and preferably not, uh, what's the other one called? Uh, imperative. So I, I, I like declarative stuff is what you should take from that. So stuff like pro prolog is a logic programming language. Yes, but I'm not good at prolog, but <laughs> yes. Uh, so Simon, what do you, what do you like? Well, I like, like uh, a little bit uh, of them all. Uh, I guess if I choose, perhaps I should, so I should call it uh, objective or programming. I would like the most. Object, ob objective? Object yeah. oriented. Object orientated, right. exactly. OK, uh, I think uh, yeah, we have another uh, question. It's very long, but basically, uh, software working culture can be quite harsh. You could have to so, some some places expect you to work a lot and overtime, and especially before deadlines and such. such. Uh, 
So how how do you think? What what is your your view of the industry? How how does it look? Uh, I guess we could start with Simon because you are in the more industries. Yeah. Well, it it mostly depends. I mean, I work in with 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 a lot of customers that some are more more critical on upon deadlines and some others are don't. In those cases, the the deadlines are more critical than the others. Then you have to be a bit organized and 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 planned uh, very detailedly how you how you process your your work with oh today I'm going to do this work and today uh, after like for four hours then for another on the afternoon perhaps I have to work with, with some another projects depending on how how critical they, they are but uh, me mostly being just planned and and calm in and calm in the situation and handle the customer. It's it very. It, it depends uh, on all customer. It, it's hard to have just one answer, but you have to compromise depending on how, how the customer is very uh, active and, and stressful and, and such. So, uh, but yeah, the best best uh, tip uh, I would say just to stay calm and, and plan it and plan it out on every project individually. I would say. So as a follow-up question. Uh... Do you feel like you are expected to learn stuff on your free time? Not expected, but uh, I like to do that because it is so fun. <laughs> and you and and I believe it's during that time you learn the most because if if you're having a project that you uh, you must learn something like this, then you're getting the pressure and you're getting more stressed out instead of uh, just I mean, taking your time on your free time and test this this feature or function out and therefore you're getting more comfortable and therefore you're getting much better uh, in, when that situation comes up in the later uh, scenario. Okay, so Albin, how, how do you feel about this? How is it more ac ac academia? Yeah, but it's, it's a difficult question to answer generally because yeah, um, for many reasons, but I mean, PhD life is, is famously really stressful and, and uh, there is definitely sort of a general assumption among people that in the general population that you should be working weekends and, and uh, evenings and so on. Um, and the thing is, you're allowed to work as much as you want, really. You're, you're, you're incredibly free to, to control what you're doing. And you're not typically not driven uh, by, by, I mean, you're, you're typically self-driving in terms of, of what you're doing and, and why. Uh, all of this depends on who is your supervisor and, and how they view life. Uh, so if, if they have other views, then then you will have a different time. Uh, so it's, it really comes down to how you're picking your supervisor. But with that said, uh, it, it really does. I mean, like like many other things that are very deadline driven. So what, what typically what you do is you poke around and you take courses. Taking courses as a PhD student is different to, to taking courses as a normal student. I, maybe there will be time to talk about that. But um, so, so it's, it's very different. Those aspects are really different. People respect your time and, and your ability to do stuff uh, it, it much more than they do as a, a regular student. Um, but so, so the, the, the pressure really comes from, from when you have a deadline. So typically you, you, what you're doing is that you work on stuff intermittently and, and sort of uh, meanwhile, and you investigate ideas and so on. And then at some point you, you say, okay, we have enough to, to publish this. We have enough for, to, to make an actual uh, paper in, in some journal or typically a conference for computer science. And when that happens, you, you, they happen with, with regular intervals and those intervals have a submission deadline. So for now, for example, I'm, I'm working towards a deadline which is 28th of January. Uh, and by then I need to have a paper uh, and, and Preferably I'm done <laughs> by that time. And, and how much pressure you, you get to actually meet those deadlines. I mean, you're, you're, you're screwed for submitting the thing uh, if you don't make the deadline. So there's no way to recover that. But, but how bad that is depends on sort of what you're doing, how time critical that is, if you can send it to some other conference and of course, how, how you, your supervisor feel about this uh, or feels about this. Um, uh, so I, I know, for example, that my girlfriend has a, my supervisor is, is famously very chill. I, I interviewed uh, several of his current PhD students, uh, now my colleagues, before I took the position. And they basically said, as a, as a 
critical thing that he, str he, he just puts too little pressure on you. And I, I thought that was perfect because I'm great uh, at putting pressure on myself. Uh, my girlfriend didn't, uh, has a different culture. At, at, she's at KTH and um, uh, she definitely is working more than I am. Uh, like I, I really take pains to go home from the office uh, when I'm done for the day. I, I, I try to sort of contain the, the stuff I'm doing because, because otherwise it would just eat my life. I, it would right. be the only thing I'm doing. You have to set these limits. Otherwise you can't, can't make it. Okay. <laughs> You'll go crazy. <laughs> Yeah, we, we, maybe you should move on to some other question. Uh, I have prepared some more questions, so the audience w can also post questions in, in the Zoom chat, and I encourage it a lot, because otherwise it's just my questions. Uh, so my next question is uh, more on your studies. Uh, so what, what, uh, how, how important did you think your course choices were? Uh, and like we can choose a lot in in the bachelor program. So, uh, Simon, what, which which course choices were the most important? Do you think for for you? Well, I I decided early in the beginning that I wanted to be a web developer. So I chose the the courses who will give me more, me more points in that. So it prepared me well enough to uh, to, to get the real job job then after the selection. So uh, I know that uh, the computer scientist program recommends a lot of uh, courses like yeah, you, you could take this, you could take this. Uh, uh, and it's a very good re regular re re recommendations. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and uh, but uh, it, it all it's very, it, it's very o open then uh, it, it's a uh, take parts of every different uh, uh, I, IT uh, sub branches in in life, so I chose chose, this, chose to do most web developer courses, so I get well prepared for for meaning like you know, after the studies then. So I, I will say it, it's it's a uh, very important. Me while well, you, you can also uh, also choose to take other courses just to be entertained and to test out other courses and. And uh, to learn a new knowledge could also benefit in uh, the the work you then chooses to do. Uh, so it, it's good uh, priority, uh, but uh, I think it it, uh, it uh, would be very very good to specialize in some area, so you can do that very good, and then you have a better chance to get the the job you, that you dream of or you like. Okay, uh, a follow up question. Uh, I know you like math a lot. So, mm -hmm. which math courses do you think are most fun or useful? And yeah. what was the last part of the question? Uh, which math courses did, did you think were the most useful or fun? Ah, uh, I would say algebra. Then uh, elementary uh, number theory was uh, re really fun, and also takes a, a part of it's very uh, useful for computer scientists also uh, as, as well. Uh, just this basic math part is is a uh, for, for my uh, for my part was uh, about uh, a bit easy, and then also very useful in uh, the areas I work uh, as a uh, as a computer scientist. So I would recommend uh, those courses a lot. Yeah, uh, Albin, which mm -hmm. courses did you think were the most fun or like useful? Um... Fun and useful are different. Uh, in just yeah. math or in computer scientists in, in overall? In, in your studies in general. Mm -hmm. ah, okay. in, 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 in computer science programs at least. Okay, um, tricky. Uh, because I don't think the answers for me are the, should be the answers for most people, but I, I'll try to sort of make something useful of this. All right. Um, so I, I, I really enjoyed uh, taking Pairs courses. They are now called, I think, constraint programming and optimization, something like that. They, they usually have constraint modeling or optimization in them. But it, it's also, when I took it, it was AD2. Uh, so that's algorithms and, and, uh, uh, and data structures too. Uh, the, those, I think, are, I mean, in general, they are well organized, uh, which is, um, 
I think it's very important for me to for causes to be that. I, I don't like when they are sort of chaotic and you don't know what you're doing. Uh, but they also teach you a lot, and 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 sort of, it's important for me that the teacher really cares about what they what, what they're teaching, um, and not everyone does. I also liked and, and sort of appreciated um, uh, the compilers course, uh, and I think you should take the operating systems course, uh, but I don't th think it's any good. Uh, I, I have a disagree on that. Okay. The operating system course was. Probably the best one I, I, I went to. Yeah, good. Carl Marklund is a very good teacher. Um, OK, then that's another thing we disagree on. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, but it's not, it's not me, so uh, yeah. we should talk about you. Uh, I think your input is useful as well. Well, I guess I'm in third year, so. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so there are some heavy courses in, in the program. Uh, such as the IP, IOPM course. Yeah. Uh, you, you are you are a teacher system there. So do yeah. you have any, any like tips on how, how to manage stress or, or like the course in general? Yes. Um, in in particular for that course, I mean I'm I'm incredibly partial uh, given <laughs> that I'm teaching it right now. Yeah. Uh, but so I think uh, I think you should use the resources you're given, uh, and in particular in that course. Uh, we give you coaches and, and sort of uh, people who care about you. Like, I, it's, it's often hard to convey this in a good way, but we really absolutely care about how you're doing. And if you feel that you cannot manage uh, and, and it's too much, you should say so, uh, because we, there are things we can do. And we try actually to, to make sure that you get the, that you learn this taking that particular course. Um, then, of course, I mean, you should also take breaks and remember to breathe, but also sit down and do the actual work. Uh, I mean, th those are just straightforward things and, and make sure that you sort of, you know, the difference between uh, when you're doing useful work and when you're sort of procrastinating slightly usefully. Uh, for example, if you're rewriting or you'll make files to be optimally perfect, then maybe you're not doing, that's not the best use of your time. Just aim for the for the least thing you can get away with and then improve on that I think is, is in general a working term um, I think so I disagree with your classification of IUPM as hard I don't think it is hard I think it is large and complex and heavy maybe you said heavy I don't know yeah okay. it's I think there's an important distinction between a course that is hard and a course that is heavy and the difference is a course that is hard you can fail no matter how much time you spent uh, that, that's the thing. You can you can get lost doing the course, and you will not. I mean, in the worst case, you will not succeed. Uh, a course that is heavy just requires a lot of work for a long time. <laughs> yeah, that's and I, I agree on that. Yeah. I agree on on that. It's a, it's a very big course in, in that sense, not yeah. necessarily knowledgely heavy, but it's yeah. a lot not much much to do, and that is very good uh, thing to know to learn also. That said, I was so anxious for that course that I basically did the entire thing b during summer before I started it. So that's also <laughs> an option. <laughs> uh, that's a good tip for the past years, maybe. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, yes. So, so, yeah, in my experience, that course was, it was stressful, but it, it, if you just continue working, things yeah. work out. Uh, yeah. yeah. It will Keep on rolling. <laughs> yeah, as long as you're continuing working, it's it's it works out in that. Yeah, it's it's important though to just to mention that PS courses that I talk about do not work like this. You need to take a break and go away and do something else, and you need to be ready to drop your idea if it isn't working, because you can spend an infinite amount of time trying to improve on an idea that will never work. I, I'll take that to heart. I, I, I take that course right now. Yeah. Okay. Uh, <laughs> So, I'm happy uh, and, and sad for you. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, <laughs> it, so far it's fun, but maybe maybe that will change. Fun and awful, and those are very close. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't know so, I mean, if you have any more input on, on, on this question. Otherwise, I will move on. Okay, so Michael has a question in the chat. Uh, so hard, how hard is it to get your first job after graduating? And similarly, how hard is it to advance in your career? Uh, I guess Simon, you're pretty good. Have a, you're, yeah, 
what, what I'm right in that alley. No. Well, the boring answer is it all depends on what, what you like to work with. I started it very early on that uh, I wanted to work with some web developers web developer because uh, partly it, it's uh, it's fun and then I know it's uh, uh, a lot of requests to want to have web developers in the society both in Uppsala and, and Stockholm so it was a very nice target to aim at and so after my studies I jumped on an uh, IT consultant bureau and started to work uh, that, there uh, me is started up uh, on small projects me while I was studying then I, I was when when I feel uh, finished with with my studies, then I jumped on to to search for uh, full full time jobs in, in Uppsala in those areas, and 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 I got it uh, quite uh, quickly, I would say. But uh, as as I was saying before, I was focused in the early stages of, of my studies that I wanted to work with this, and it's an area I know there's a lot of jobs in. So it it's all. Uh, all, all, all a bit depends on what, what you would like to work with as well. Okay. Uh, so, Albin, I guess you, your perspective would be quite different because, mm -hmm. yeah, so, and how, how long are the world? What, what do you think? Um, yeah, obviously, I also applied for jobs, uh, and not all of them were in, in academia. Um, so, in particular, web developer was, was a thing I had previously worked as and, and knew I didn't want to do. I, 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 this was the thing I was worrying about doing for the rest of my life. <laughs> it was my nightmare scenario. Uh, More work for me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, there, there's, there's no shortage of work, uh, I'm sure. Uh, so, and, and I knew I kind of wanted to go in, into academia or at least into research. There, there's research being done in, in the industry as well. I had some experience from, from Ericsson as a summer intern and I knew they kind of liked me, but I didn't like them. I thought the things they were doing were not super. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I uh, uh, let's put it like this. I didn't get the first job I applied for. Uh, I think there were places that, if I recall correctly, there were num a number of places that turned me down. Uh, but I also got more offers than, than I needed. So I had... Uh, so I, I think, I mean, the trick to, to get a job is the same trick as for winning, winning any, any other kind of lottery. Uh, you just get lots of tickets and one of them will work out. Uh, for, in particular, for, for going into academia, the things that are important, I think, uh, these are, I mean, I've never been re recruiting anyone. Uh, but I think in particular, they will look at your, your um, thesis in a way that, I mean, first of all, you have to have a master's degree. Uh, otherwise, they cannot employ you, I mean, legally. Uh, and second of all, uh, you, I think your, at least your master's thesis and preferably also your, your previous bachelor's thesis have to be at least okay. I, I mean, I, my, my master's thesis wasn't very good. I, I didn't like it. Um, it's not the best one I've written, I've written for. Um, so it's, it's um, but, but it was okay. Uh, but the usual trick that you do, uh, and don't tell anyone all about this because that is, this is not the way it's supposed to go, but the usual way you do is that you find, uh, you find some researcher that seems to be doing something interesting uh, during your studies, and then you just hang around. You sort of, you can ask them for, for I mean, do you have anything I can work on? Do you have thesis topics? Uh, I have some time left, do you want, I mean, you, that sort of thing, and that, First of all, that gives you uh, experience and it gives you sort of brownie points and it lets you get to know them and then uh, to get to know you, which means that, that that will work out in your favor when you're applying. Uh, but I don't think people outside of academia understand this, but it's, it's really, really bad to do a poor recruit, recruitment when, when you recruit a PhD. Uh, it's, it's incredibly expensive. You cannot get rid of a bad PhD. So people will be very conservative <laughs> uh, because you, you're stuck with them for four years or five, uh, depending on uh, typically five. Uh, so it's, it's, we have great job security, uh, but it also means that people will be worried uh, when they employ people and they will prefer, prefer to recruit someone they know, which is not great. <laughs> and actually, 
not entirely legal <laughs> because they're supposed to, to recruit people like objectively looking at the merits. But if you know someone to be an okay person to work with, that's a pretty strong merit. <laughs> All right. So we have another user, uh, user a viewer question. Yeah. Uh, it's about functional programming languages. And uh, uh, I will reframe it to be a bit more open. So functional programming languages, uh, are they like used, uh, where are they used more? It, it feels like it's more of a theoretical thing. And uh, are they like useful for real stuff? Uh, I think, Alvin, you said you liked functional language, functional language more than imperative languages. What do you think? I don't, you're um, not in, in, in the industry though, but yeah. anyway. Uh, I mean, I, I work, all my work is in Scala. Uh, which is functional and ob object oriented that we kind of lean heavily on the functional aspect. I know all my girlfriend's work is in OCaml, which is also object oriented and uh, functional. I think, I mean, you're right. Uh, functional languages are vastly preferred in, in uh, academia. It's, it's, it seems like all the people who, who want to work on functional languages are going uh, or using functional languages. Uh, both actually <laughs> going to into academia. It's, it's a very strong bias um, because we like to do real work using good tools. <laughs> <laughs> so, so uh, Simon, what, what do you think? Do you, do you think you're doing? Well, what, yeah, what, what do you think about this? Hobby? To be honest, I quite kind of forgot which languages are functional or not, but uh, based on my experience in my area I usually uses mostly uh, J uh, JavaScript, uh, PHP, uh, HTML, CSS and, and all that stuff in web de development so it's not so much in my area at, at least PHP wasn't functional. I, if no, you I, remember. Think so. no, I think they've, so. they've added some, some nice stuff. No and I'm not entirely sure if some uh, web applications like uses is it uh, it's Python uh, fun functional? No, a little bit. I think the React framework is pretty heavily inspired by functional, functional. languages, mm. uh, and JavaScript has some some light features, but it's also not hundred percent right. No, it's like very much. You can write very very imperative code in JavaScript too. Mm. So, <laughs> so I think it's, see Alvin nodding and <laughs> shaking his head. <laughs> so, so perhaps not so much in my area, and uh, maybe it's just like Albert said, it's more in the th theory part. And I remember it was it was the first uh, language we uh, language type we focused on, and getting this logical thinking and all the key elements in what a pro project language is, and using it, for example recursion and such. So it's a very good lead into to just learning how a project language work. Mm. I have some answers too. Uh, I think uh, GitHub has some big like project to analyze all the programs that, that they have on the platform, and that requires like a lot of things, different things, and they, they use Haskell for that, and like some fancy like effect system, and and it's kind of cool. But it's also like in the industry, and uh, I think fa Facebook uses Haskell too for their spam filter system. So some places have very functional code. Mm -hmm. And I think Erlang is used in some places too. Um, I, I know Klarna famously used Erlang before. I don't know if they still do. Uh, okay. I, I think I asked someone about it and they sort of shrugged and then went somewhere else. <laughs> <laughs> but it, absolutely, I mean, yes, there, if you want to do functional programming, you can absolutely find uh, jobs in the industry where you do that. That That is not a problem. I mean, I yeah. mean they do exist. I've met companies at, at conferences. Typically, the co companies that show up at conferences usually talk about functional programming <laughs> because, <laughs> because they are the kind, uh, the, the kind of people, I mean, the kind of people who go to conferences also like, at least programming language conferences, which is the ones that I've gone mm. to. Mm -hmm. Uh, so I have some more questions, I think. Uh, yeah, so you both st studied in the, uh, in the, in the programming, in the computer science program. So do you have like any tips to us who are still here that you learned after you graduated or like began, began working? working? Uh, I think, yeah, we can do, Simon, can you? 
uh, the best tip I took from my studies were how to Google. <laughs> <laughs> because uh, in the early stage, I was in, in, the, in the philosophy or more like I was very comfortable with that. I'm um, an uh, well, um, uh, teachers and assistant like they handed me the problem for me, or at least I got that that uh, way of learning from the from from the ground school. But then uh, when I studied on the university, it was more like you had to work more independent, and it was scary at first. But then as soon as you go along, then you realize, yeah, this is how I can how we research knowledge and tips and code, how to solve problems. And beyond that, then they discuss with some classmates and friends and stuff, but just how to to solve a problem by yourself. It was very, it was very cool and revealing like, that, oh, this how to Google, what, what would I do without it? And I still Googling today. <laughs> I mean, do you have like some other perspective from from academia? You, have you learned anything that you wish you knew, knew before? Oh, that's a good question. Um, I'm going to be really boring and say not anything that I think would generalize. <laughs> <laughs> do you have anything specific? specific? Well, maybe. No, I, I mean, I think I've learned things from my mistakes. And if I, I don't think that's transferable. I think everyone needs to make their own mistakes. That that's a very boring answer, but I, I think I don't think it, it works that way. <laughs> <laughs> just, also, just plan your life. <laughs> it and it's also okay to make mistakes. It's in it's in that way you learn the most. Why does this doesn't compile? Why does it say error? Then you research and and realize ah now I understand and now you understand it even better than before. Just if it worked the first time you tried it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but if they haven't made mistakes by the time they graduate, then I don't think they will start. <laughs> uh, so, uh, I think we're, we're, we're running out of time soon, but I, I'll try to get in one question more. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, you, hmm, yeah, you're you're researching stuff, but what 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 are you researching, and like how did you decide, and that was what you wanted to do? Um, there's an interesting answer and a boring answer. Um, okay. The boring answer is that I'm researching the thing that had an open position that seemed the best out of the things that had an open position, uh, and and that was. Um, so this is going to be very funny in context of the things I said earlier, but it's web security. <laughs> Right. Uh, now, what that means is that I'm working on, uh, so to dumb it down enormously, is that the output of my research will be a program that you uh, point towards your web uh, site, either a running website or some code. Uh, that program analyzes the code and tells you if you can have injection vulnerabilities. It, it of course, works for anything that can have an injection vulnerability. So it could work in theory for... Uh, backends uh, and things talking to databases and shell injections and so on. But it, but that's in a nutshell what, what I'm doing. It's a static, does it analyze it statically or is it mm, more of a Right now problem? it's, it's um, so I'm collaborating with some people from Shalmesh and they the thing they're working on is is sort of a mix of static analysis and and uh, dynamic analysis. So it, it actually works on a running web page. It's, it's oh. a spider that crawls the web page, figures out the structure of the web page, uh, figures out which input goes where, and then tries to attack it. Um, okay. And uh, I'm working on sort of, but, but the thing I'm working on really is, is the reasoning program that actually uh, reasons about the string equations. So it's really just a front for doing advanced mathematics. Um, <laughs> It's it's it became super apparent when I when I after a few meetings with my my supervisor that he is not there to do even output a program that is useful to anyone that that that's my input I want to make something that's useful but I think he is uh, mostly there for, for 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 the mathematics really or logic I guess I guess uh, it's good that you're there though yeah yeah I think so I mean I I think I I'd like to think that, that I'm contributing something. <laughs> <laughs> 
but but in a broader sense, I'm interested in safety technologies and uh, and things that would will make sure that we don't make mistakes. I think that we are moving too fast and are being too sloppy uh, in many senses of the word. And I, I think we need to be better at, at producing better things. That, and that includes programming languages. It includes other things. Um, and in particular, it includes programming languages. I'm, I'm really interested in programming languages because I, for two reasons. First, I think we're not done yet. I think we do better languages than the ones we have. And for the second reason, I, it, it's that uh, I, I view programming as mostly a language operation. I do not see it as mathematics. Uh, I, I, and I see mathematics also as sort of programming or, or languagey. Uh, because my brain cannot handle mathematics. I, I, I can only reach at mathematics through language because that's what I'm good at. Um, and I don't think that is common. <laughs> I think many people who are attracted to computer sciences come from sort of a mathematical background. Mm. Uh, but yeah, I, I, I would like to make things that make sure that our programs do not have bugs or at least if they must have bugs that they are fewer and less severe. I think that that is my the thing that really motivates me. Um, so things like Rust or? or yes, yeah. I, I've, uh, I've done some work with Rust as well. That's cool. Uh, Is it like a pen testing then, your, your work, or? No, uh, I mean, it's automated pen testing in a sense. <laughs> nice. uh, but uh, I mean, my work is more theoretical than that and more basic in the sense. It's, I mean, that, that is sort of, Somebody else really does the, the program that, that does the front end stuff. I, I uh, reason about things that comes from that program. All right, cool. cool. All right. Um, hmm. So I, I have a, like sort of a, a equivalent question to you, Simon. Uh, so you, you, you really like web development. I sure do. Uh, so what what is it that, that that you like about, about it? Because we have like at least two people here that aren't really that hundred percent sure it's it's fun. <laughs> so. Well, well, I, li I like the part of that. Uh, it, it's all about to creating some application or system for other user to be using, just to to have a customer who have a such a way they working, who's very old fashioned, not very optimized. But then via uh, my, my work or uh, a project for, for my company, we can make their, their uh, daily work much better with a more interactive system or, an or a mobile app and so, stuff like that. And yeah, just that uh, creating system for other people to use, I found it very nice to, to do. Uh, of course, you can do that in other levels of project, project uh, uh, languages, but I, I think it was a. It, it's quite uh, uh, nice to, to learn. Just uh, it, it was like on, on the first level of application uh, do, doing. Like uh, instead of working on the low level, I want to use. I mean, how to do a website, how to do an app, how to do an, uh, an administrator uh, GUI and stuff. Uh, and I, I found that uh, very pleasing. It's fun to create stuff. Uh, and uh, yeah, I, I think it, it's actually quite fun. So, so I guess related to that, that you, I know you have made a, a, a site for table, te ten, table tennis, like ranking and fun statistics and stuff. Could you tell us Correct. more about how, how you decided to do that and like where the edit came from? Yes, and it's actually my biggest hobby project. I, I have been playing uh, ta table tennis since I was seven years old. and. Uh, and since like 10 years ago, the, the national uh, t t table tennis uh, uh, society from what, but uh, they, they, they decided to do a special type of uh, ranking system who is a bit com complicated. And uh, I li like it to learn, how, it has always been interested in like, statistics and how to uh, calculate how much ranking you, you're getting on and the ranking system based on every individual game you play. So if I meeting some special opponent and he have this ranking versus my ranking, if I win, if I lose, I getting this much point. Before that, that it was just doing it on paper and pen and paper. But then as, as long as was, I was growing as a developer, then I started to practice this 
basic u usage of my learnings that, oh, now I learned HTML and, J and JavaScript, how to implement this so I can do it in a more practical way. And as long as, as my y the year's gone, I practicing uh, approved more and more, both as a developer and also test out more newer web, uh, newer uh, uh, frameworks and, and stuff. So that was getting more and more advanced and then now in May, I, I published my five-year anniversary of, of my of application, and I'm feeling it's very, it's a very fun project because I all, all, all the time learn, get getting better as a developer, and the app is also getting better performance and faster, and such. So it's uh, yeah, it's quite fun. It's the best way to learn. Do it by by yourself on on your spare time. I have a question. Yeah, sure. Please. Uh, so. It seems to me like you've been doing the same thing both as a hobbyist with your table tennis application and uh, professionally, uh, mm -hmm. and you've spoken mostly about your, your private version. Um, mm -hmm. And I, I, I imagine that they might, I mean, anybody can really sit down and get uh, hobbyist, um, do hobbyist stuff. Uh, mm -hmm. How would you say that, that the experience of that process has been different between the two? Have you, uh, so for example, uh, do you have the same sort of direct contact and, and sort of uh, ability to influence your, your design decisions when, when you're working on a project and, or is it more or less fun and so on? I mean, how, how can you say something to that? Uh, yes, it's, it, it could be uh, on my company. I, it's not very strict just to use just one single languages all the time. And then if I do some testing, some other frameworks and languages on my spare time and can motivate it uh, to introduce on the work. And then my associates thinks, yeah, it's it's very good, good plan. Mostly we keep us in the same area is based on like uh, what code, uh, programming codes we're using on the back end and front end and such. And, um, but uh, if, if the framework is very good, has very good documentation, that's, uh, and uh, if I believe it, I learn, I know it very well. Then uh, my company doesn't seem is, is, think it's a bad idea just to practice that as well. So, uh, with, with that said, if I I haven't uh, done so much hobby program on my spare time, perhaps it's uh, I will just stay on the same programming languages and uh, framework I just. Uh, I used to, but then it, um, well, this is part part of the motivation just to have a hobby project and try out more uh, other framework and such uh, uh, during the time goes. Uh, so it, yeah, it's uh, um, not necessarily we, we keep them apart. My hobbies from from my work, but uh, they can uh, learn by each each other. It it could be the, the other way around. I learn something practical at work then oh yeah i must do this to my personal app as well so it, it give or take in, in both cases okay so the last question is basically michael throwing back the question back at you albin uh so how, how how does your work differ from your like your hobby stuff or the stuff you do in, in your spare time if you have any or had any mm. so i've, I've some had some hobby projects uh i've been on and off. Uh, I think it's important to say this in, in this context that you do not have to have hobby pro programming projects. It might make you a bit of programmer, but it's perfectly fine to view this as a job. It's, it's I mean, yeah. th th there is a culture of, of sort of having this as a hobby and many people who, who sort of care deeply the way, uh, mm. for example, I do, may, may do that, but, but mm. it's perfectly fine not. I mean, it's, I think that is important to say so that nobody takes Oh, that uh, from from this okay it might so, even be healthier too <laughs> yeah it might be healthier yeah. i could agree on that yeah <laughs> so with with respect to that i do uh so i do very little hobby programming right now because i have some rsi issues with my hands and i prefer not to use the computer when i'm not working i i have to save that energy uh i i also have to save my mental energy i i really don't have the energy to spare for that sort of thing uh, and i have you know um but uh, with that said, I mean, I, I, the difference is that the things I'm doing for work are incredibly more complex than the things I've ever done uh, myself. I, I've written 
minor scripts and uh, sort of smallish web projects and some servers and stuff. I mean, small things. Uh, and the things I'm doing for, for, for work now are de depend on many other people's work and, and they are enormously complex. And, and it's sort of, I mean, you, you can't say this because it's out of picture, but my main tools for this job are really pen and paper. Like I'm doing most of the work in pen and paper and LaTeX and and on the whiteboard, uh, which you can't see, and I've erased everything from it. Um, <laughs> the, because I mean, a lot of my work is is theoretical, and I you, I don't normally sit down at home and just do some theory. <laughs> That's not it's not. I mean, it's not fun in that way. It is very rewarding, but it's not fun and and sort of give me the kind of gratification that. It's hard to do that spontaneously. Yeah, yeah. I, I need to be driven by someone. I, I would not do this on my own, which is why I'm here. I wouldn't learn these things if, if I didn't have somebody staring me and telling me what to do. Uh, you, you can't do that. It's, it's I mean, I, I don't think you as a student appreciate how big the, the field is in terms of research. It is incredibly large and incredibly complex and horrendously deep. <laughs> uh, and and there are so many things that they know they just scratch the surface on like there are complexity classes for example that, that you have never heard of that i have never heard of and i read books about this for fun <laughs> <laughs> it's it's insane how big it is okay uh, that sounds really fun though yep and scary yep <laughs> really scary yeah, it's really scary. <laughs> but I mean, I, I also have the chance of actually proving things that will, will be I mean, mathematical truths that will, that will hold forever. That's a trade-off. <laughs> <laughs> cool. If I succeed, I can also get stuck in that forever. <laughs> <laughs> the things I'm trying to prove may not always be possible to prove. Oh, yeah, right. Well, fingers crossed then. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh... I don't know what what do we do now. We are, we are like we are out of time, but I I, I can sit here more. I can talk. I can go a few minutes more. Uh, so one question maybe, but not more than that. Uh, Same. I don't here. really have any more. Okay. Questions. I think we we like we fit, we, fit, we fit all the questions very well in, on time. That's good. Foo or uh, bar. Well. Foo or bar. <laughs> Uh, I'd say foobar. <laughs> Good answer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Michael, Michael agrees. Nice. <laughs> uh, foobar is nice. If you haven't been there, uh, it's, it's, nice. it's a nice place. Yeah, I, I, I just want everyone to know that... Um, so I went to KTH some time ago, and uh, they had exactly the same place uh, with a similar name. I can't remember what it was called. Yeah. Uh, like... I don't know, maybe 10 years ago now. Um, it's just, it seems like the, the same places keep recurring. <laughs> it just, whatever's wrong with, with this culture just produces the same place over and over again with the same kind of people. I mean, I wait, swear wait, wait. they look the same. So, so it's like also a cellar with, with like Spark yes. or, or... Yes, um, <laughs> all or, of these uh, things. Do they have a TARDIS? No, they had something different, but it was yeah. it something was equivalent. equivalent. Yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they had. I mean, a, a, what, some arcade machine that somebody had restored, and you know, I don't know overalls and works. I, I, I don't know. I don't like this. I don't go there unless I have to. Oh. I'm. I'm. I'm sure you're doing great work for the people who go there, but I don't like that kind of thing. <laughs> I don't go for it. That's fine. Well, I, I did know that like Fubar isn't really a terribly original name, but yep. I don't know the whole place was like it, it's the very whole, the it, whole place. It, it's, it's, it's very it's computer science in there. Yeah, it, I don't know, <laughs> maybe studenty. I, I think. Yeah, yeah I maybe. It's, it's just a recurrence. I, the, there probably was one in the eighties. It's probably just happening all over again. It's yeah. it's. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, it, no, it's it's like exactly the same. I, I came the first time I came there, I thought I was hallucinating. I was like, it, it, I've already done this. <laughs> Everything is exactly the same. <laughs> Deja vu. Yeah, yeah, they changed something in the Matrix. <laughs> Stupid um, overalls and everything. I, well. I'm sorry, I, I shouldn't I shouldn't trash talk the overalls, but I think they're stupid and silly. 
And I, it's I, silly, yeah. But... And I hated the, the reception. Oh, shit. With a fiery passion. <laughs> <laughs> Both that's times, <laughs> yes, that's my opinion. I, I, I. That, that's why I have to caveat everything. I mean, I'm, I'm, yeah. Mm -hmm. the, 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 the audience like have any more questions because yeah. Speak up now or or forever shut. Uh, no. <laughs> that's not how that goes. No, 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 <laughs> no. Nobody's getting sorry, married. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> At least not today. Well, I guess we're done then, I suppose. Yeah. Uh, thank you both so, so much for coming. Yeah, thanks uh, for having me. It has been very, very, very fun to, to sit here and like listen to you and talk to you. Thanks for having me. Yeah, I love talking as you no doubt have read. Yeah, I, 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 I noticed that. <laughs> <laughs> I guess thank you, Karin, Karin also for like arranging the whole thing. Yeah, thank you for listening or for having this. It was very interesting, even though I'm not a computer scientist at all. <laughs> yeah, and apply for diplomas. It's yeah. fun to have them. Don't exactly, <laughs> exactly. That's my last thing. The things that I want to send to everyone. <laughs> have your diploma taken. Yeah. No, so thank you, everyone. And thank you to participants that have stayed so long. Um, yeah. Bye, everyone. Bye.